Hello, and welcome to Andrew Broussard Watercolors. Today, we are going to do a tonalist watercolor landscape painting. Now, with this, I have no idea what I'm going to paint. I'm not even sure what palette I'm going to use. However, I have been playing around a lot with the different Chinese paintings, with all this different stuff, but I wanted to really just get a good tonalist watercolor painting in. So that being said, we have a quarter sheet of Stonehenge Aqua. It, I think it came with a crease in it. I tore it into quarters, but there um, was some weird creases on it. So I don't know what that was about. It's 100% cotton, 140 pound cold press, taking the large hake brush and saturating this. Um, it's February down in Louisiana. It's the 13th, day after my birthday. Happy belated birthday to me. Um, but the reason I'm saying it's February is that it's kind of cold down here. It was 31 this morning, it's about 50 now. So I have the heater on and that's gonna affect the humidity in the house. Um, so I'm curious to see how fast this one's gonna dry. So I'm really just kind of globbing this on. We'll leave that on the side. Okay. Now, I had in a previous video, we played around with Davies Gray from Van Gogh Brand, and it surprised me how many comments uh, where people had overlooked Davies Gray just as much as I had, and they were looking back at their tubes and started playing around with it again. So that was cool that. It was something that I had overlooked that I never tried in three years of watercolor. Got it. And then other people were inspired, I guess, or just wanted to go look at what they had and to play around with that. So that's awesome. Let me know if there's any paints that are outside the norm that you would like to see me use. And I can order it. This is Davies Gray. I'm going to put in what I want my sky to be. For me, it had read as kind of a, um, I don't mean this in a demeaning way, a sickly type light pollution glow. Use this for the sky. that in there. I don't really plan on using it for anywhere else in the painting. It's so light and so soft that I really can't see any other uses for me on a palette with it. It just becomes overpowered if I was to mix it with anything. If you have any usages or suggestions, let me know. That being said, let's grab some light red oxide and some ultramarine blue. This is going to be my distant purple. We're going with the flow here. It's purple is not working the best with this other color so far. I might have to mix some earth tones into it, like a uh, umber. All right, let's see. So that's my horizon line. Build up. Distant trees. Let's grab some burnt umber, ultramarine. Feed this in. So 
So number four rigger. Almost tempted just to grab a little light wash and create a mountain back here. Look at that puddle of water I'm just pushing around. All right, let's grab some raw sienna. And map out as we come to the foreground. You know, we'll do a little waterway coming through. So I'm changing the angle that I'm moving at. I'm gonna grab some Payne's Gray, really the edge. I think I'm pulling this from a memory of a George Inez painting. I'm not quite sure. I'm going to put a tree mass here. I can put a foreground tree mass here. So I'm just creating my composition to get the idea. Coming off the side. And that's going to come into the foreground. And then back here. I'm going to make a more pronounced tree line. And I'll put a building back in here. I was sketching with um, a silver point the other day. I had done something like this. Whenever I sketch with a pen, um, pencil, silver point, I'm able to get larger scenes with more depth in them. So that's something... I want to approach with my watercolors, those larger scenes. This is going to be a big tree, but I don't want it to take over the whole side of the painting. just feeding in the wet and wet just getting a feel for where I want everything to go burnt umber and with the wet and wet everything goes nice and soft and then our dry brush layer will look really good over it I started the year off with a desire to explore different um, landscape compositional shapes. They're described by, I believe, Edgar Payne in his book. And so far, the one that I've only really discussed is the steel yard composition. And I need to get around to that, but I've been keeping the steel yard in mind a lot from his description and just like a search of it. There was a lot of versatility to it. And one of the things that it mentioned was you could have a heavy object in the middle with a light object on the side, or you could have a tonal value with a tonal value matching it. And that was kind of the goal of the sketch that I had mentioned, the little building back here with a little tree line. And we'll, we'll explore that. Payne's Gray. You can use the card to just scrape out simply the shape of the building. 
and we'll come back in with color with tonal values. Um, here's some raw umber. I'm not too concerned about palette exploration. We do, we're kind of exploring, I guess, the Davies Gray as the sky color. I think I started feeling one of my issues there is that I'm making this way larger than it really needs to be. So I'm going to switch to my number one rigger. And this will be to put in some tree structures. Just with the Payne's gray. Mute it down a little bit. So we're wet and wet. And as you can see, the lines are going to soften, but they're also going to get thicker. Get some marks here. This is our far tree line. I might put a secondary tree line on top of this. So that'll come a little bit closer. And we'll see how it reads. We'll put these two right here. Once again, this is the edge of the water. And I think I think it's loosely based off of a George Inez in my mind, but once again, I'm not sure. It's a brush hair or a hammy hair. Alright, I'm gonna stretch the paper out. Grab the card, scrape a little bit for texture. The pointed side is going to do more damage onto the paper. It's also going to allow backfills to take place. You could use the rounded side of the card if we want to create the lights. And it just seems like using a card in general will help push your tonal values in both directions. So right in there, we're going to have that building. There's the water right here. Okay. Let's see. Raw Sienna. We'll do Raw Sienna and Payne's Gray. We're really taking advantage of the wet and wet stage and frankly I, I wanted to do a longer painting so I'm not too concerned time wise. I don't think I'm going to break it up into two parts. I know I had done that in the past so if you'd like to see more two part videos let me know in the comments below. That helps me gear the videos towards what you all enjoy and um, I love getting feedback from y'all raw umber darkening up this edge right here since just doing a lot of the two color paintings that raw umber has just skyrocketed on my list of colors to use I want to mimic 
this tonal value back here. Now this hake brush is over three years old, so it's very, very straggly and gives great texture. So um, if yours doesn't do that, don't worry. You'll eventually develop your brush to kind of do what you want to do. Let's see the far side. This guy softens so light back here. That. I just use my hand to <laughs> clean off my brush. Let's bring these guys a little bit higher since this one's a little bit shorter and it's a little bit further back. It has stayed pleasantly wet throughout the painting process. I had started off with a concern about the temperature and humidity in the house due to the heater, but so far no issues. should soften up some fingers crossed paints gray paints gray for the shadow for this inside shadow for this group here I might have put too dark of a note right there but that's that's okay I think we're at a point where we can pause and take a look at the overall feel of things. Um, reflection there, sorry about that. Let's do a dry off. Okay, so we do have a nice soft look to it. In fact, looking through the camera itself, it almost kind of hurts my eyes how soft and diffused it is. I'm thinking that we're gonna take advantage of that we're going to put in that building, then maybe build up this texture a little bit more. I'm, like I said, looking through my camera, it looks like it's almost uh, not in focus. That's interesting. <laughs> so let's grab the number four. And for the building, let's grab some ultramarine blue. Mix it in, mute it a little bit. It's kind of nestled right between those two. Let me see. Yeah. Am I out of focus? Okay, I just wiped off the lens a little bit. Yeah, we're a little bit out of focus, I'm sorry. 
Look at that, it's nice and soft though. Let's see. I'm gonna let that dry before I put anything else around it. I don't want to um, get any bleeding to take place. While we have the number four out, let's mix up some darks for a tree trunks. Payne's gray. Burnt umber. Try not to pass over exactly what's there so that we get a sense of depth building up. Use the brush on the side. Dry brush marks. Same thing back in here. This seems like aggressive use of the brush, but have this brush just as long as the, the hake, I think. So if I'm wearing it down, it's definitely lasted me a long time. Grab the number one. There's some expressive strokes in this tree. I need to ground these so they don't look like they're just floating there. The hake. I'm using this for depth and to create areas that are kind of closer to us in relationship to the leaves around it. Okay, happy with it so far. Let's um, pause for another dry off. All right, dry enough for our purposes. This combination, this mixture, is what I believe uh, James Fletcher Watson and probably Ron Ransom had used for sides of buildings. It was um, the light red oxide and the raw sienna. Now with the recipes for mixing stuff, uh, don't really worry too much about correct proportions because different brands, different water, different brushes, there's so many different variables in it. Just know that you can play around with those two colors to get that terracotta type color. I could probably get a little bit more light red for parts of a, maybe a little chimney there. And I'll do a little accent mark on it in a moment. I'm gonna grab some, and try something here. Nope, too much. Just 
just a little smokiness coming out. Okay, another dry off so I could paint over that spot. And I'm just gonna add slight accents on what I had just added. I don't wanna go into too much detail with this, especially because of how far back it is. That little shadow line. I could just grab a little bit of paint gray for a window probably. Speaking of smoky, um, they've been burning the cane down here. And walking outside the other day, it was like a, a bonfire smell. Everybody's sinuses are just completely wrecked. This is Payne's Gray. We're going to accent this foreground on both sides of this little waterway using the number one rigger. So tomorrow is Valentine's Day and the day after the Super Bowl. I'm not a, uh, a football fan. I'm, I'm just not a sports person. I like soccer. I like watching that. But um, I have a Super Bowl tonight. So tomorrow, I'm sure the kids at school are going to be all amped up on candy from Valentine's Day and who got who a huge teddy bear and who won the Super Bowl. So... Wish me luck tomorrow. That's going to be a fun work day. <laughs> Been um, going over, reconciling bank statements with the students and checking accounts, which I always find is a really interesting topic because it's that direct application of math that students always ask, when are we going to use this? And that's always just a great application aspect. Dry brush build up a little bit more density. I think more foreground elements would help keep us our eye from going off. Just because that flat plane right there was just a little too much. Okay, let's look at it through the camera. Okay, so we're, I think, about 20 minutes into this, and if I pause it, we'll do a dry off. Um, we'll sign, see if there's anything else that needs to be done. Oh, forgot birds. I'm always forgetting birds. Now, here, you see a lot of birds of play, uh, prey flying around due to... Um, the fields and the smoke. All right. All right. So here's our finished result. I hope you enjoyed. You know, please like, subscribe, follow. Um, if you want to support this channel, a whole bunch of links down below. And of course, you're always welcome to paint along, sign your own name, and you have my express permission to sell anything you do that you follow with this channel. Because I want you guys to have fun, be successful, and have money for art supplies. Let's look at it with a mat. And let's see. Sorry. There you go. All right. Hope you enjoyed. You'll have a great day. Thanks for watching.